about um, the Jewish holidays. Probably you heard about many of them, and many of them probably you didn't hear about them. So we'll learn about um, uh, officially or nationally uh, nationality of the of Israel and the biblical ones. Uh, and I will go in order, like from the beginning of the Jewish uh, calendar till the end of the Jewish calendar. Okay? So the Jewish holidays are celebrated in Israel officially and uh, nationally, and vacation days are set in accordance with them, like with the, with the calendar. So we will be talking about Oops, why somebody? Okay, so we'll be talking about these holidays today. As you can see, there are many. 3, 6, 9, 12, 14. I probably skipped one. And as you can see, Rosh Hashanah is the beginning of the Jewish holiday. So almost 13 holidays we'll be talking about today. Because Judaism, as you can notice here, that goes in. Okay, the Jewish um, has its own calendar, or Judaism has its own calendar. The Jewish calendar, which has 12 lunar months based on a cycle of the moon. The Hebrew month starts with the first appearance of the new moon. The 15th of the month is when the moon is full and the month ends when the moon disappears, if that is clear. So the Jewish holiday, some of which are very ancient and based on the seasons of the year and mark on agriculture cycle also. So a calendar based on the appearance of the new moon However, is not compatible with the natural cycle of the 365 day year, not like the, our, our calendar. So a system was therefore to develop in order to synchronize the lunar month with the solar year. Since the very beginnings of the Jewish traditions, the custom of a leap year was instituted. So every two or three years, based on the exact calculations, a year will have 13 months instead of 12, maintaining the uh, synchronicity between the lunar month system and the, and the, um, the Jewish holidays. And in the season of the year, of course. So the leap or doubled, Month is always Adar. The six months in the Jewish calendar are approximately March, early April. It's unlike the Georgian calendar. It's unlike our calendar in which the days are counted from midnight of the night until midnight of the following night. So the days on the Jewish calendar are counted from the sunset one of the day until sunset of the next day. So for example, the Sabbath, for example, begins from or on Friday evening and called Erev Shabbat. Therefore, businesses in Israel close early on every afternoon. So Shabbat ends on Saturday evening. So the Jewish holidays similar or begin and end in the evening. So some of the holidays in Israel are religious holidays connected with Judaism, while others are national holidays connected with the history of the state since it was established. So the religious holidays are usually celebrated in a family or community settings with each of many Jewish ethnic groups in Israel observing its own customs and laws for each holiday. So it depends on the families, depends how 
they are religious and how much they are religious. So the religious Jews observe the holidays according to long-standing traditions, which usually includes special prayers, of course. So secular Jews also observe the holidays, but over the years, each family or social community has developed a different holidays custom, which usually includes large family dinners. Most of the, you will see now in the PowerPoint, most of the holidays includes dinners for the feast. So the cycle of the Jewish holiday begins with Rosh Hashanah, as I said, the Jewish New Year in Hebrew months of Tishrei, if you can see where is Tishrei, number nine, number nine, ten, that's the beginning of the, so the beginning of the Jewish calendar is in October normally, so usually late September and early October, so Rosh Hashanah is followed by Yom Kippur, the day of atonement, and Sikot, the holiday of the booths, and during of these holidays, they are holidays on which the government offices and businesses are closed in Israel. So the second holiday period on the Jewish calendar is in the spring, when the holiday of Purim, Pesach, or Passover, and Independence Day are observed in the Hebrew month of Adar, Nisan, and Ayar. You can look at the calendar and see when they are in our calendar, which correspond with March, April, April, and May. So during Pesach, um, uh, many businesses are closed and many days of work enable Israelis go uh, away on vacation. So let's start with the Rosh Hashanah. Rosh, Rosh Hashanah is the holiday that marks beginning of the Jewish year is in the Hebrew month of Tishrei, which coincides with the late September and early October. Unlike the other holidays, which have one holiday on which businesses are closed, Rosh Hashanah is two days holiday, and businesses are closed in both days. So the holiday in two days, according to tradition, started in the, in the diaspora when there's a onset of the new moon, which traditionally uh, decreed by the high court in Jerusalem was not known. So according to Jewish traditions, Rosh Hashanah commemorates the culmination of the creation of the universe and acceptance of God uh, sovereignty, sovereignty over the world. So those are the days on which God judges people deeds throughout the year and decides their future for the coming year, death for sinners, life for, uh, for the non-sinners, and repent, uh, repentance period until Yom Kippur for the people whose status is uncertain of course that's to the uh, according to the jewish belief so the period between rosh hashanah and yom kippur is called the 10 days of repentance during which people have the opportunity to atone for their for their for their sins so rosh hashanah has customs for the jewish people of course, prayer, the first thing. So religious Jews attend synagogues, services, and recite special prayer. And uh, uh, like uh, liturgical songs uh, written over the centuries, they sing, they pray. Uh, the version of the prayers are... Uh, uh, like songs very slightly from the ethnic group to another. It's different from group to another, of course. And they also have the the silachot, that's the name of the prayer. And during the week or month, depending on the ethnic group, of course, prior to Rosh Hashanah, 
there are special selachot or prayers requesting forgiveness and expressing remorse and repentance. So in Rosh Hashanah, it is important for the Jewish people to blow the shofar 100 or 100 times, depending on the ethnic traditions. I don't see the big difference, like one time extra. So shofar blasts are sounded in the synagogues in single, triple, and nine blast uh, group groupings. So the shofar the blasts are in intend to symbolize God's sovereignty over the world, to remind Jews of the giving of the commandments on uh, Mount Sinai of uh, of Abraham and Isaac devotion to God to arouse people to repentance and uh, heard the day of judgment and the coming of the Messiah. So that's when they play the shofar so, or sound the shofar. And when the first day of Rosh Hashanah is on Sabbath, so the shofar is sounded only in the second day. So they cannot play shofar if it's Sabbath. So apple and honey is like one of the custom in Rosh Hashanah at the evening meal. In Rosh Hashanah, it's customary to eat apple dipped in honey and other sweet uh, foods symbolize a sweet year. Also in Rosh Hashanah, Kashlish, if I pronounce it well, so on Rosh Hashanah afternoon, it is customary to walk to the river, lakeshore, or other open body of water to shake out one's pockets and some symbolically cast one's sins into the water. So if you come to Israel during this period, it is worth it going and try this customs. So Jewish performing this custom, and you can perform it with them. And when the first day of Rosh Hashanah is on Sabbath, Talish is performed also in the second day. So the Sabbath is not a day for Talish. In Rosh Hashanah, custom, customs also, until a few years ago, Jews in Israel and around the world used to stand Shana Tova, greetings card, as we do sometimes in Christmas. I don't, I don't know if people are still doing this, to their friends and relatives, wishing them health, happiness, and prosperity for New Year. Today, this custom has almost disappeared, as most Israelis prefer to use the telephone or emails, WhatsApp, and so on. On a, on a way or the other, it's customary for Jews, for everyone they meet during this new year to say Shana Tuva, a good year. Also in Rosh Hashanah, it is important for the families, whether you are uh, religious or non-religious, to celebrate the holiday meal. Even secular Jews who do not go to synagogue Services have a holiday meal on Rosh Hashanah evening, of course, with the fine wine, apple dipped in a honey, and other sweet dishes. And uh, it is customary to eat pomegranate and a symbol of a plentiful year. The head of a fish symbolizing the desire to keep ahead and other symbolic uh, foods. So that's about uh, Rosh Hashanah. So after Rosh Hashanah and the Jewish calendar, what comes next is Yom Kippur. So Yom Kippur, as I said earlier, the day of atonement, it is the holiest and most important holiday in Judaism. It is a day of fasting and prayer that is celebrated on the 10th of the Hebrew month of Tishrei. 10 days after Rosh Hashanah, the Jewish New Year. So Yom Kippur marks the end of the 10 days of repentance or the high holidays and grants Jews 
the a last opportunity to obtain forgiveness and absolution for their sins in the previous year. So according to Jewish belief, on Yom Kippur judgment is passed on each person for the coming year in order to be, to be worthy or forgiveness from sins, this day is devoted to spiritual repentance and uh, commitment to start the new year with a clean, um, uh, with a clean spirit or clean uh, thinking or without any sense. So, uh, and to secure like the knowledge that God forgives forgives every person who truly regrets in his misdeeds. So the idea, purifications, is fulfilled by fasting. On Yom Kippur, observant Jews fast from the evening of the holy day until the following night, unlike all the other Jewish fast days, Yom Kippur is observed in full, even when it's considered coincides with Sabbath. So Yom Kippur is the only day on the Jewish calendar during which there are five prayer services. Yom Kippur is not directly connected with any specific historical event, although some believe that on this day, Moses came down from Mount Sinai with the second set of the tablet engraved with the Ten Commandments, and God forgave the Israelites for the sin of the golden calf. So this is a holiday ordained in the Torah, which is called the Sabbath of Solemn, or uh, solemn rest, a day of which no protective work can be done, just like Sabbath. You cannot do anything. So even though most of the Jewish population in Israel is not re religiously observant, Yom Kippur has the remains uh, a special day for all and has returned its unique character. So many Jews who define themselves as secular and do not visit the synagogues all the year long go to prayer services in the special day. They go to the synagogue in that day. And many also observe the fast completely, even if you are not religious. So the customs of this um, of this feast on Kippur, the Torah states that this is a day on which Jews are to afflict their souls by observing a total fast from both food and drink. There is also a prohibition against the physical pleasure, wearing leather shoes which any part of the body includes brushing the teeth. So the fast, which lasts from sundown on the eve of the holiday until the stars come out, uh, yeah, the stars come out uh, the following night. So is intended to not only cause physical discomfort, but to relieve a person of involvement in this physical matters so that he can concentrate on the prayer and spiritual uh, inspiration interruptions required on this day. So on this day, they have the kaparot in Hebrew, which means atonement ritual, ritual. On the day before Yom Kippur, there are a customary atonement, you can see it on the slide, ritual, uh, atonement ritual, in which a live chicken is swung in a circle above the head of the person 
in belief that the person's sins will be transferred to the chicken, which which is then will be slaughtered or the, the slaughter the chicken and customarily give the poor or sold it out and the money will be given to the charity. Of course, many, many chickens, not only one like in the in the slide. So silahot or prayers asking for forgiveness in addition to prayers during the days of repentance, presiding Yom Kippur on the holiday itself or before or before it, it's customary to ask forgiveness from anyone whom one might have offended. And according to Jewish belief, Yom Kippur atones for sins between man and God but not between man and his fellow man. So people must grant and another forgiveness individually. So of course in Yom Kippur also the Jewish people uh, celebrate. Let's see how they celebrate it. On the eve, so on the eve of Yom Kippur, not in Yom Kippur itself, there is a religious uh, perspective uh, precept to eat a holiday meal that ends before the beginning of the fast at sunset. So the fast begins immediately after the meal. So prayers, of course, is important. We talked about it. The religious Jews spend the whole of Yom Kippur day in synagogue, devoting themselves to prayer. The prayers include a general admission of since and each person uh, slide, uh, silently adds his own personal sins. One of the important prayers prayers is Kol Nidere, all vows named after the opening words of the first prayer, which cancels any vows that a person has made it. So it is customary to go to synagogue dressed in a holy clothing. And many people wear all white clothes, symbolizing uh, purity. So we finished uh, Yom Kippur, of course, like other uh, feasts in Yom Kippur, they blow shofar. And when they blow shofar, uh, it marks uh, the end of the day of prayer and fasting. So what comes next in the, in the Jewish calendar after Yom Kippur is Sukkot. So Sukkot, or a feast of booth. I think we all know about this. It's very popular in Israel. It's the third holiday in Hebrew month of Tishrei and is one of the most important Jewish holidays. Sukkot is one of the three Pilgrim, pilgrim holidays when the whole Jewish people would come to Jerusalem in ancient times when the Holy Temple was there and would offer animal and grain sacrifices in the temple. It is particularly joyous, joyous holiday or joyous holiday that combines religious and agriculture elements. So support uh, originates in the Torah and commemorates the booth in which the Israelites, the Israelites lived in the desert after the exodus from Egypt. So a sukkah is a temporary dwelling, usually with wooden or cloth, cloth is wall, on at least three of its four sides and on a roof made of three branches. Tra traditionally, today they use the palm uh, branches through which the sky can be seen. So another explanation for the customs of building a booth is to commemorate the booth built in the fields at harvest time to protect the harpets, the harvested crops. 
So Sukkot is also known as the harvest holiday as it is celebrated in the autumn after the summer harvest and before the planning of winter crops. A central theme in the holiday prayer is rain. The farmer thank God for this year harvest and pray for the rain for the coming year. So Sukkot lasts seven days from the 15th to the 21st of the Hebrew month of Tishrei, usually the middle of October or in the middle of October. The first day and the last days are particularly the feast or festive where they celebrate the first and last day. The first is a holiday and the rest when no productive work is allowed, similar to Sabbath. So most businesses are closed. The eight days from the beginning of the Sukkot is called Shemne Atzeret. is a separate holiday. We'll talk about it next. The intermediate, uh, intermediate days are similar to weekdays. So holiday customs is building a sukkah. That's almost all Jews, whether they are religious or non-religious, especially for kids, they like to build sukkah. So the sukkah is built in keeping with strict rules dedicated by Jewish law. The sukkah must be built under the open sky and not under a roof or tree. And it's customary to decorate it or to decorate the sukkah with the various fruits, papers, customs, and pictures. And you will see sukkah built in the yards or in the balconies or of all homes where religious Jews live. Although many secular Jews also like to build sukkah to delegate of their children, as I said. So during the seven day holiday it is a religious obligation to eat only in the sukkah <laughs> so if you come to israel and sukkah you will see people even in the hotels they build sukkah and they eat inside the sukkah so and jewish law the kids sleeping even in the sukkah too they can sleep in the sukkah Um, so let's talk about, about the Shemni Aseret and Smichat Torah, and this is also is connected to the, uh, the Sukkot. So the day immediately following Sukkot, the eighth day or the, the eighth day from the beginning of the Sukkot is called Shemni Aseret. And it's also a holiday day. It is separate, the holy day uh, ordained in the Torah and special prayers mentioned uh, of the coming rains. So in Talmudic times, third century, these dates were also set as a holiday of Smichat Torah, rejoicing over the Torah, as you can see in the slide. On this day, the cycle of reading of the Torah in the synagogue is completed. So they read the Torah from the beginning till the end and started again. So not only one time. So the holiday custom is dancing around in circles with the Torah in the synagogues. The Torah scrolls, which are always kept in a special uh, cupboard called Aron Kodesh or Holy Ark, are taken out and the men dance with them around the synagogue during the evening prayer service. It is customary to dance with the Torah scrolls outside the synagogues so that the whole congregation can share the 
joyful or the joyous uh, atmosphere. That is nice. I, I myself done that with my friends. So the reading of the Torah um, during the morning services, all the men in the congregation, including the children, are called up to a uh, pulpit where the Torah is read to make a blessing over the Torah. So Smichat uh, Torah flags, that's one of the customs uh, that children are giving flags bearing symbols of the holiday, that the religious symbols are quite often in, uh, interspread with Zionist, uh, Zionist or uh, nationalist, nationalist symbols. And this is the end of the of the feast when you see the kids are with the flags dancing. That's uh, the end of it. So after the smichat Torah, what comes next on the calendar is Chanukah. So Chanukah is one second. Chanukah. Um, like unlike most of the major Jewish holidays, Hanukkah's origin is not in the Bible, but rather in events that happened later. <clears throat> this holiday that lasts eight days and begins on the 25th of the Hebrew month of this life, or usually in December, there are no completely holy days, so businesses are open as usual. Why? Because it's outside the Bible. So Hanukkah marks a, a historic event that took place in the Salocide period or the Greek period, if you know the history, in the second century BCE. A few of the Salocides king, and um, it's the dynasty that followed Alexander the Great and which was based in Syria, tried to force the Jewish or the Jews in the land of Israel to adopt certain customs that were against the laws of Judaism. So the worst degree was the king, uh, his name is a little bit, Antichaus, uh, ordered the installation of a statue in the holy temple. Of course, that's against the Judaism Law. So in 1967 BCE, the Jews revolted against the Greek Solicites regime. So a few leaders of the revolt, the Hasmonians or the Maccabees, were the sons of Metatiahu, uh, uh, the high priest. So in 1964 BCE, under the leadership of Judah, the Maccabees, or uh, the revolt reached its uh, climax with the liberation of Jerusalem from for, uh, the foreign rule or the Greek, including the holy temple. So they purified the temple and they took over. So the events uh, are documented in few historical sources written at the second of or at the end of the second century. So a few decades after the revolt, and according to Jewish tradition, the holiday of Hanukkah was instituted by Judah Maccabee. So what is the Hanukkah? So it's the holiday last eight days, commemorating the celebration, marking the purification and the uh, redic the redaction of the Holy Temple. And a miracle recorded in, uh, in the traditions when Maccabees looked for holy oil or light, uh, the candle uh, brahm in the temple, they found only one small flax seal uh, had not been broken and was therefore uh, still pure. The oil was enough for one day, but uh, a miracle occurred 
and the oil burned for eight days. In addition to the element of the person marked by the holidays, Hanukkah also a motif of light against darkness. So Hanukkah is also called a holiday of light. So what people do in Hanukkah, so throughout the eight days of Hanukkah, candles are lit in a Hanukkah, and candle uh, abram with eight branches in a row, and an extra candle holder. So if you count them, there are nine, but they will light eight only. And this is called the Shamesh or Shemesh, from which the order candles are lit. So on each night of Hanukkah, in addition, candle is lit. So starting with one on the first night, two on the second, and uh, etc., the the Shemesh is always lit. So this one is always lit, the next nice one. So such that in practice, two candles are lit the first night. So three on the second and etc. So the Hanukkah is placed on the window or some or in some other visible place when you go to uh, Israeli houses and that and that uh, festival you will see the Hanukkah always on the windows. So and, and it is forbidden to use the light for any purpose. So you only light this candle and that's it. You cannot use it for any other purpose. So there is a custom to light the Hanukkah with olive oil. Although most people today, they use uh, colorful wax candles. Uh, everything is changing, of course. So short blessing is uh, recited over the lighting of the candles. Uh, and a uh, ceremony in which children are also included and in which is followed by the singing of the Hanukkah songs. So in Hanukkah and or in Hanukkah, it is important to do jello donuts and potato uh, fritters. So another Hanukkah custom is eating a special food, mainly those fried in oil, such as donuts, and also uh, spinning tops. So children play with four-sided spinning tops marked with the Hebrew initials of a great miracle happened here. It is also customary to children to give children Hanukkah uh, guilt money for buying candies or toys. So this is about the Hanukkah. Now we go to Purim. I'm going a little bit fast because I don't want to take too much time. So Purim is one of the happiest and most joyous uh, holidays in Jewish traditions. A holiday who is religious, uh, uh, um, uh, precepts include uh, being happy and even getting drunk. So you have to get drunk in Purim. So this is a holiday that allows even the most uh, uh, serious to run scrolls or scholars to get caught up in the spirit and enjoy Carnival's atmosphere. So the source of this holiday is in the Bible or biblical book of Esther, which relates the saying of Persian uh, jury from Haman. I, I know you know the story, chief minister of Persian King uh, Ashurus who was plotting to kill all kingdoms Jews. 
So the story is estimated as between the destruction of the first temple and the beginning of the second temple in the late 6th century BCE. So the date on which the date on which Purim is observed, the 14th of the Jewish month of Adar, usually in March, is keeping with the date Haman had determined for all the Jews to be killed. So Purim celebration continue through the following day, which is called Shusha Purim, Shushan Purim. So the custom of this holiday is the fast of Esther. That's another fasting day. The day before Purim is a fast day, commemorating the fast by Esther and all of Persian uh, Jewry before Esther approached King Ashuris to plead for her people. Unlike the uh, the feast of the day of atonement and the Tishabia, but similar to to other minor Jewish fasts. So the fast of Esther starts down and ends at sunset. So the reading of Book of Esther on Purim evening. And in the morning of the holiday, the book of Esther is read aloud in the synagogue. There is a religious uh, pres uh, pres precept for women to hear this reading, too. Of course, they hear it, and but they don't read it. And children are also welcome. So the reading of Esther is a very happy social event at each at each mention of the wicked Haman, who has become like uh, synonymous with all those who bear ill will toward Jews. So the, they congregate, and especially the children, try uh, to down out his name by shaking special noise mar markers. So the holiday meal after the fast is the holiday meal, of course, with games um, and other uh, assonements that last late into the evening. It is a religious uh, precept to get drunk, as I said before, to the point of not knowing the difference between the hero of the Purim story and evil. Haman. So in Purim, gifts are fancy foods. As part of the joy of the holidays, Jews have custom of uh, preparing gift baskets and sending to their friends and neighbors and give money to the poor. They also one of the customs is wearing masks and uh, customs developed in the Middle Ages, of course, apparently influenced by the local Mardi Gras holidays. A small children take special interest in the aspect of the holiday and can be seen in the streets wearing their customs. So after the Purim, what comes next on the calendar is Pesach. So I'm going in order, as I said earlier. Pesach or Passover is a major holiday in Jewish tradition and is one of the three pilgrimage holidays along with Sukkot and Shavuot. There are the holidays on which the whole Jewish people would come to Jerusalem in ancient times or biblical times when the temple also was there and they would also offer sacrifices. So since the destruction of the temple, a few of the holiday traditions have been re, uh, returned without the pilgrims, or pilgrims and sacrifices. And many, of course, uh, all the traditions have been added or new traditions have been added. So Passover 
which starts on the 15th day of April month of Nisan, and that's in April, lasts for seven days and celebrated to commemorate the exodus of the Israelites from Egypt. So according to the Torah, the Israelites lived in Egypt and were enslaved by the Egyptians. So Moses or Moshe, uh, an Israelite who grew up in the palace of the pharaohs, the king of Egypt, became the leader or a leader of the Israelites and asked pharaohs to allow them to return to the land of Israel. And when pharaohs refused, Moses led a campaign that uh, uh, culminated in his people's hurried departure their departure from Egypt towards the Sinai Desert, where they lived for 40 years. So according to Jewish traditions, during this long journey in the desert, led by Moses and his brother Aaron, the Israelites became a united people as they prepared to conquer the land of Israel. So Pesach is also called the holiday of freedom, and this aspect of the holiday is emphasized in the rit uh, rituals and prayers. So the exodus from slavery or slavery to freedom symbolizes physical and spiritual uh, redemption and man's aspiration to be free. So, the holiday custom is prohibition of eating living throughout the seven day holiday, the prohibition against eating uh, liver or liver loaves called shemits is in effect to, uh, in uh, commemoration of the Madza or Mitza that the Israelites ate on their hurried journey out of Egypt. The prohibitions includes all types of bread and baked goods and baked goods made of flour, dough, and also all types of pasta. Eating matza, matza is flat bread made from unrisen dough, apart from during the uh, sumorial seder meal. Eating matza is not compulsory, but for most Israeli families, uh, matza is the uh, accepted alternative to bread throughout the holiday. So they don't eat bread, and this is alternative. So what they do also, oops, this is what is called pure chemins. The er eradication of Liban, Liban or Laban. In the weeks of prayer of to Pesach, Jewish customary clean their homes uh, truly to ensure that not one gram of uh, chemits remains. Non-religious Jews often use this custom also as an opportunity to spring clean their homes and create a holiday atmosphere. <coughs> so the religious view, this is a uh, precept, uh, precept that must be strictly observed and follow a special process to remove chemits even from their dishes and cooking ut uh, utensils or they use special dishes just for, for Pesach. So on the night before the day of Pesach begins, it is customary to search in all corners of the house by candlelight to make sure there are no 
uh, grams anywhere. The state of Israel as uh, representative of the Jewish people customarily serves all payments in Israel to a non-Jew at a sim uh, and at a symbolic prices and buy it immediately following the holy the holy day. So the seder, the meal, this is this is a length ceremonial meal held on the eve of the holiday, the evening before the first day of the holiday. The family gathers around the holy table for the seder, the reading of the Haggadah, and the holiday meal, the Haggadah is uh, a, com a completion of texts from the Jewish traditions, passage from the Bible, from the Mishnah, commemorates, uh, and songs. Whose main, whose main theme uh, is the Exodus from Egypt, of course. So the purpose of the reading of the Haggadah is to transmit the Pesach tradition from one generation to the next and to ritual the uh, designated or designed um, first and foremost to arouse the children and so on. So the rituals during the Seder are all symbolic, such as eating of matzah, and bitter herbs. The drinking of the four uh, goblets of wine, singing together, and of course, the big meal. So, Afokim or Afokoman, in order to encourage the children to stay awake, Throughout the seder, it is customary to hide a special pieces of mitzah called the afokoman somewhere in the house, and the children have to find it, and whoever finds it will get a prize. I'm just telling you some customs that the Jews are doing. So now we go to one of the national uh, holiday that the Jewish people would celebrate, of course, it's outside the, uh, the Bible and comes after the Passover, is the Holocaust Remembrance Day. So Israelis, the Israeli Days of remem Remembrance of the Holocaust and Hiroshim is held on the 27th day of Nisan towards the end of April or beginning of May. One week after Pesach or Passover, the day is dedicated to memory of the six million Jews killed by the Nazis and, and to the Hiroshim of the Jewish resistance of the Holocaust. So the date was set to mark the anniversary of the Warsaw uprising on the eve of Pesach, April 19. 94, uh, 1943, sorry. So the Memorial Day was first marked in 1951 and was uh, decreed by law in 1959. And all places of entertainment, including restaurants and cafes, are closed <coughs> from the eve of Yom Hashua. Ashua, till the following evening, memorial services are held throughout the country and the center state uh, ceremony takes place at Yad Vashem. And this picture is from Yad Vashem, Israel's official Holocaust Remembrance Organization at 10 a.m. in Kippur, or it doesn't matter when, uh, normally it's at 10. Uh, the sirens are sounded for one minute throughout the country, and it is customary to stand silenced, and flags are flown in half mast 
and TV and radio broadcast or, or are devoted in this subject. So you um, in that day, ordinary businesses, now some Israelis do take part in the memorial uh, ceremonies, but the day is felt most in the country. Schools are special uh, ceremonies are, are held. Holocaust survivors and their families usually light remembrance uh, candles in memory of their relatives on that day. So, Yom Hatzma'ut, Independence Day, that's what comes next. So after the disaster, we have the Independence. So Independence Day, Israel National Holiday, marks Israel's declaration of independence with the end of the British mandate. It is uh, the only full holiday in the calendar decreed by law without tradition of hundreds or thousands of, of years. Then we have Jerusalem Day. So Jerusalem is a national holiday marking the liberation of the city and its uh, unifications or unifications after the Six Day War. And the day is held on the 28th of Ayar, and that's in May. The day Israeli soldiers liberated the eastern part of the city in 1967. And of course, Jerusalem became, because our, that's because Jerusalem became the capital city of the Jewish people in the time of King David, who conquered it and made it the seat of the monarchy or his monarchy in approximately 1000 BCE. So following the Israelis' war in Depends in 1948, the city of Jerusalem was divided with the older eastern side falling under the Jordanian control and more recently developed western side falling under the Israeli control. On the third day of the Six Day War in June 1967, the Israelis' army captured the ancient eastern part of the city 1964 victory marked the first time in thousands of years that all Jerusalem came under Jewish control after King David. It also allowed Jews access to the holiest part of the city, especially the Western Wall and the remnant of the ancient temples. So after Jerusalem Day, Jewish people celebrate the Lakba Omer. Lakba Omer, I'm almost done. Lakba Omer is the third, um, 33th day uh, that are counting uh, that comes after the Pesach. So they count after the Pesach 33 days this is, and ends on Shivaot. So the counting of Omer is ritual that dates back to ancient time when the Holy Temple stood in Jerusalem. So according to Kabbalistic traditions, the day also marks the anniversary of the death of the great second century, uh, Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, is known as Rashbi. And each year on the day, they celebrate like hundreds or thousands of Jews from all over the world, visit his tomb in northern of Israel, of Mount Miron, and singing and dancing and merrymaking. So after the Lakba Omer, we have the Shavuot. Shavuot is the holiday of weeks is one of the three pilgrimage, pilgrimage holiday along with Pesach and Sukkot. There are holiday, three, these are the holidays on which Jewish people again would come to Jerusalem and sacrifices in Jerusalem when the temple was there. So Shavuot holds seven weeks after Passover. 
at the end of the counting of the Omer, uh, a verbal counting of each of the 49 days between the Jewish holiday and the Passover and Shavuot, of the Passover and Shavuot. So the holiday celebrates the giving of the Torah on Mount Sinai, as well as the grain harvest for the summer. So Shavuot was one of the three pilgrimages, as we said, that all Jewish men would go to Jerusalem and bring their first fruits as offering to God. So today, uh, Jewish people celebrate Shavuot by going to synagogue to hear the Ten Commandments, having um, best of meals or dairy foods, staying up all night to learn and reading the Book of Ruth. The meal and synagogue attends our customer uh, customs for any Jewish holiday. So the last one I'm going to talk about today <laughs> is Tisha B'Av. Tisha B'Av is a day of mourning, marking the destruction of the first temple destroyed by uh, destroyed in 586 BC by uh, Bukhadnazar, the king of Babylon, and the destruction of the second temple destroyed in the year 70 CE by Tito, Titus, emperor of Rome. This date also marks the beginning of the explosion of the Jews from Spain in 1492 by order of the Spanish monarchy. The day is observed by uh, chanting the Book of uh, Lamentation and reciting uh, mourners' prayers while sitting on the ground uh, or on stools as a day of mourning. One of, or one is uh, expected to refrain from smiling, laughing, or or chatting. So no eat, no drink, all adults, even pregnant and nursing women fast on this day. Uh, one, one who is ill or pregnant woman who feels uh, excused or weak or, or if they are weak should consult with uh, the rabbi. 